Now let's talk about the one that really gets me in the gut, right? The one that bothers me to the core, and that's Zoom. So on the Zoom, no, actually, before we talk about the breach at Zoom, let's talk about the dark web. The dark web is kind of this nebulous thing out there that everybody knows is out there, but not everybody knows like really what goes on there. In, in my simple mind, I think of the dark web as BGL or bad guy land. Bad guy land is a place where you can go to get lists of usernames and passwords. You can get lists of open proxies in order to hide an attack. You can go rent botnets in order to magnify your attack or scale it out. It's basically a place where people can go to get information to do nefarious things on the internet. Now let's talk about how bad guy land affected Zoom. Now we all know what Zoom is. Zoom is a way for individuals to connect. A lot of times it's used for business or sometimes people use it for to connect with family members. Like over the summer, I had a virtual family reunion with my entire family. So it's basically a way for people to connect. And I'm sure you'd agree with me that over the past year, Zoom has had a great run. They've had to scale out their business. They've um, had to deal with a bunch of requests. They've done you know, really well as a business. Unfortunately, because they had to focus on scaling their business and dealing with requests and growing, they weren't paying attention to bad guy land. A bad guy went to bad guy land and got a list of known username and passwords to do something called credential stuff. Credential stuffing is basically where you take known username and passwords and you iterate through until you can log into a service or to a backend environment. It's a lot easier, or it's a lot harder to identify and contain than like say brute forcing where you take a username and you iterate through passwords like admin or password or one, two, three, four, five, which is what's on my luggage. Uh, credential stuffing, since it's, a username and password, it doesn't work, they go down to the next one. It's a little bit harder to both identify and contain. So our bad guy went out to bad guy land, grabbed a list of known good username and passwords for Zoom, was able to log in with credential stuffing, and they were able to both see or and hear transcripts of previous meetings, but also log into live meetings. So the transcripts that they were able to get a hold of were Citibank officials having meetings, Capital One officials, which we'll talk about later, do, conducting business. But the one that really, really bugs me, the one that gets me in my soul, is that this bad guy was able to log into live school sessions so imagine this some weirdo in the next town takes a good username and password and logs into your son or daughter's classroom they're listening for things like do they have a sibling or events like maybe a student lost a pet so your child is playing in the front yard the weirdo pulls up and says hey susie I hear you lost spot last week. Why don't you come with me to the park where your brother Johnny's at so we can get your dog? That's the worst of the worst of the worst. Zoom had a major reputation issue. Again, that leads to loss of customers and loss of potential revenue. Frankly, I have customers that say, hey, Jim, I'd love to meet with you, but we won't do it on Zoom because they have an insecure platform. We have to use WebEx or Teams or GoToMeeting, whatever, but they won't use Zoom.